What's up guys, it's Josh here, back with another Kansas City Chiefs related video. And boy, does it feel good to be back. I know it's been a while since I've made a video, but it's because a whole lot hasn't been going on right now. And I see other Chiefs channels out there and other Chiefs content creators doing a good job. Still trying to get some stuff out, but sometimes I cringe a little bit when I look at these topics. At this point, we're recycling a lot of the same stuff about if this rookie's going to step up or if this guy's going to step up or, you know if McCole Harmon can make the jump or if the Chiefs can trade for this guy or this guy or sign Richard Sherman. I've talked about basically all of that already. But now we have some actual news I'd like to discuss, and it kind of pertains to the Chiefs a little bit. Uh, N. Kill Harry, the uh, Patriots' 2019 first-round draft pick, uh, wide receiver, he has officially requested a trade from the New England Patriots. Now, why does this pertain to the Chiefs? Well, because we all know general manager Brett Veach loves former first-round picks, former high-round draft picks. So, of course, it is just instinct to assume that Brett Veach is at least going to do his due diligence with Nikhil Harry. And the Chiefs also have an apparent need at wide receiver, or at least that ex-wide receiver role, uh, which Nikhil Harry has the size and the physicality to do. He's 6'4 and over 200 pounds, so, you know, he does have that profile. But anyways, before I dive further about whether or not KC should acquire Harry, I just want to read the quote from his agent uh, in which they formally requested a trade. So this is uh, from Mike Garofalo on Twitter. He tweeted out the uh, quote he received from... Nikhil Harry's agent, Jamal Tucson, uh, and this is what it says. For the past several months, I have been working in cooperation with the Patriots behind the scenes to put a plan in place to allow Nikhil Harry to thrive in New England. Through two seasons, he has 86 targets, which obviously hasn't met the expectations the Patriots and Nikhil had when they drafted a dominant downfield threat who was virtually unstoppable at the point of attack in college. Following numerous conversations with the Patriots, I believe it's time for a fresh start and best for both parties if Nikhil moves on before the start of training camp. That is why I have informed the Patriots today I am formally requesting a trade on behalf of my client. Nikhil understands a key ingredient to production is opportunity. He will continue to work hard to develop and refine his craft after missing a large portion of his rookie year to injury. His draft day expectations for his NFL career have not changed. We are confident success is just around the corner for him and will aggressively pursue it. Now, like I said, Brett Veach loves those former high round pick reclamation projects where he takes, you know, failed high investments from other NFL teams and turns them into, you know, pretty productive cheat or excuse me, pretty productive pieces for the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, we've seen it guys like Reggie Ragland, Emmanuel Ogba, Taco Charlton, you know, that kind of thing. I'm also a pretty firm believer in giving a player a new set of scenery and a fresh start somewhere can really help a guy. Uh, you know, sometimes when you're somewhere where you've failed to succeed so far and then you go to a place with, you know, new surroundings, new people, it just gives you this rejuvenated feeling that makes you more productive in what you do. So there's definitely intrigue here. And I do think Nikhil Harry could be a better receiver with another team. Uh, he has had a disappointing career so far. It's no secret. In two seasons with New England, he's had 45 receptions for just over 400 yards and four touchdowns. That sounds like a single season stat line. That's Nikhil Harry over the past two seasons. You know, we sit over here and complain about guys like McCole Hardman, including myself. I've been critical of McCole Hardman in the past. But McCole Hardman came from that same class, and he has more than double the yards of Nikhil Harry in his career so far, and they took him before McCole, so sometimes we got to sit back and be grateful for what we have. Nikhil Harry has also struggled a little bit with injury, though. He missed about half of his rookie season due to injury, so... Like his agent mentioned, he fell a little bit behind in that aspect, and he didn't get that much opportunity. Look, only 86 targets with the Patriots in two seasons. Now, 
some of that I believe is also on Nikhil Harry because uh, he's been, you know, not great. So uh, I want to get into why I don't think the Chiefs should look around here because here's the thing. I'm typically someone that is all for looking into a player that maybe didn't perform up to standard with a team and then the Chiefs bringing them in and, you know, just seeing what they got, you know, for, I mean, for example, Todd Gurley's still a free agent out there. I made a video about bringing in Todd Gurley before. Um, yeah, I'd be open to it. I mean, a former, you know, Pro Bowl running back, let's see what he's got left. You know, he was decent with the Falcons last year. Uh, you get my point. Like, I'm all for that in almost every single case. However, there's a few reasons I don't think that she should bring in Nikhil Harry. First of all, Nikhil Harry is someone who's kind of your go-and-get-it type receiver where you throw him up a football, like a 50-50 ball, and you just trust him to come down with it. And the Chiefs just really don't go for those types of receivers. They like the speedy, smaller guys like McColl, like Tyreek, you know, guys that'll stretch the field. They don't really go for the possession type receivers anymore you know the game is changing away from those guys at least for the Chiefs and in their offense and even when they've had guys like that like Chris Conley for example they never really utilized him like that Chris Conley was a great vertical threat um you know he could jump up and get a lot of different kinds of balls but the Chiefs Andy Reid they never really drew up those like 50-50 balls for him and utilized that so I don't see them utilizing it with Harry either and then Harry he just he I've never been impressed with him as a prospect I thought he was a bad pick when the Patriots originally took him in 2019 and I still think it's a bad pick now as we're seeing uh with this whole process unfolding here uh and Nikhil Harry just cannot get sep any separation. And a wide receiver that can't get separation is not going to succeed in the Chiefs' offense. They're just not. And another problem I have with acquiring Nikhil Harry, like if the Chiefs are to bring in another receiver, and I'm all for them bringing in another receiver um, if they think someone is good enough or if no one steps up in camp or anything like that. Because, look, there is questions about this Chiefs wide receiver core. Outside of Tyree Kill, I'm a little concerned about what might uh, happen. Like, if Tyree Kill were to go down, you know, who's your number one now? And then I have concerns about who's going to be number two. However, there's a good mix of guys that could make up the production of a number two wide receiver like Antonio Callaway, like Demarcus Robinson, Cornell Powell, McCall Harmon, all those guys, like all those guys combined, if they can just give you a little bit of this and a little bit of that here and there, like that can make up for not having a true bona fide number two wide receiver. Um, but a lot of those guys are unknowns. Byron Pringle, Antonio Callaway, you know, Cornell Powell, those guys are going to be unknowns in their new roles. So, Adding Nikhil Harry really would just be adding another unknown and a group full of unknowns, if that makes sense. Like, what does adding Nikhil Harry really give you? Like, it's just, it doesn't change anything. Like, he's just, he doesn't add anything. You know, you already have a group of guys that are better than Nikhil. Like, if you add Nikhil, who's he better than than you have? Is he better than Byron Pringle? I don't think he's better than Byron Pringle. I, I just, I don't see it. Why? And I truly don't think there's any room for him on this roster. Like, if the Chiefs are to get a receiver, I think it should be a veteran-type guy who can get open, like a Golden Tate who's still out there, or maybe a veteran receiver that could get cut after training camp. You know, somebody like that. I'm just not seeing it with Nikhil Harry, though. Uh, it depends, though. Like I said, Beach could surprise us. I know he likes to do his due diligence here. If the Patriots are only asking for a late day three pick, a sixth or a seventh rounder, Maybe they go for it because there's not that much risk in doing that. So we'll see. However, this is one of those only times I'm just going to say pass on a player like this. Uh, even though I like the reclamation project ideas too, I'm just, I'm not seeing it with Nikhil Harry. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got for this video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Would you take a swing? On Nikhil Harry, do you agree with me, disagree on anything? Let me know. Uh, that's pretty much all I got for this video, though. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe so more Chiefs fans can find this. And make sure you check out my work on showmefootball.com and caseyandkingdom.com. That's all I got. Peace.